good morning everybody our today's lecture is on anatomy of subphonic spaces and their clinical importance the learning objectives for my today's lecture are at the end of the session students should be able to define subphonic spaces and enumerate and classify subphonic spaces describe morrison's pouch and know its clinical importance subphonic spaces are also known as subphonic recesses in surgical practice it is said that pass somewhere pass nowhere pass under diaphragm what does that mean if there is pass somewhere in the abdominal cavity giving symptoms like fever but cannot be identified by clinical examination it must be located in subphonic spaces but discovery of ultrasound in 1970 has made localization of these fluid collections easy anatomy of subphonic spaces subphonic spaces are defined as being that portion of abdomen which lies between thoraco abdominal diaphragm above and the transverse colon and its meso colon below this is in fact the supracolic compartment which is further divided into two intraperitoneal parts by liver the suprahepatic and infrahepatic portions the suprahepatic portion is divided into right and left spaces by falciparum ligament of liver which divides liver into right and left anatomical lobes the infrahepatic space is divided into right posterior subphrenic space which is also called morrison's pouch or hepatorenal pouch of morrison and left space which is also called left posterior or lesser sac in addition there are right and left extra peritoneal spaces now let us go to this slide the black dotted arrow in this slide represents the transverse colon and it is missing tray about transverse colon is supracolic compartment the viscera which are present in the supracolic compartment are stomach liver which has been removed and spleen now if you place the liver in supracolic compartment it divides this compartment into two sub compartment suprahepatic compartment lying between the under surface of the diaphragm and anterior superior surface of the liver this compartment is further divided by falciparum ligament into right and left spaces suprahepatic is further subdivided by falciparum ligament into right anterior and left anterior subphrenic spaces infrahepatic space is further subdivided into right posterior space or morrison's pouch and left posterior subphrenic space or lesser sac so in total there are four intraperitoneal spaces in supracolic compartment right anterior right posterior left anterior and left posterior as shown in this diagram lesser sac communicates with the greater sac through the epipolic foramen which is also called foramen of winslow morrison's pouch com communicates with the pelvic cavity through right paracolic gutter classification of subphrenic spaces subphrenic spaces are divided into extraperitoneal and intraperitoneal intraperitoneal are further subdivided into right anterior and right posterior and left anterior and left posterior extraperitoneal spaces are subdivided into right and left right subphrenic spaces right anterior intraperitoneal space is also called the right subdiaphragmatic space right posterior intraperitoneal space is also called the morrison's pouch right extraperitoneal space is also called the bare area of liver remember there are many bare areas of the liver the largest one is represented by right extraperitoneal space which is called the bare area left subphrenic spaces left subphrenic spaces are further divided into left anterior intraperitoneal or left subdiaphragmatic space left posterior intraperitoneal space or lesser sac left extraperitoneal space right anterior intraperitoneal space is bounded superiorly by superior layer of the coronary ligament anteriorly by the anterior abdominal wall and posteriorly by anterior inferior surface of liver it is separated from the left subdiaphragmatic space by falciparum ligament as shown in this diagram superiorly it is bounded by superior layer of the coronary ligament anteriorly it is bounded by anterior abdominal wall and posteriorly by anterior superior surface of liver it is separated from the left sub diaphragmatic space by falciparum ligament right posterior intraperitoneal space this also called morrison's pouch or hepatorenal pouch of morrison it is bounded superiorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament inferiorly by visceral surface of right lobe of the liver posteriorly by parietal peritoneum covering 
suprarenal gland and kidney. It is called hepatorenal pouch because it lies between the anterior surface of the kidney and inferior or visceral surface of right lobe of the liver. If we place our fingers inside this surface, tips of the fingers touch inferior layer of the coronary ligament, dorsum of the hand touches under surface of right lobe of liver and palmar aspect of the hand rests on anterior surface of right kidney. The space is important clinically because of its communications. It communicates with the lesser side through a viploid foramen as shown in this diagram. The space is bounded superiorly by the coronary ligament and lies between the visceral surface of right lobe of liver and anterior surface of the right kidney. So it lies between the liver and anterior surface of the kidney. That is why it is called hepatorenal pouch of Morrison as shown by this black dotted arrow. Morrison's pouch is very important clinically. It is common site for post-operative abscess formation because it is most dependent part of abdominal cavity in supine position. As already said, it communicates with pelvic cavity through right lateral paracolic gutter and with lesser side through epiploic foramen. The abscesses may form secondary to appendicitis, cholecystitis, perforated duodenal ulcer and upper abdominal surgery. This site is also commonly used by surgeons to keep post-operative drains. It is also used for evaluating post-traumatic fluid collection. Let us have a recap of the boundaries of the Morrison's pouch. This pouch lies between the visceral surface of right lobe of the liver and anterior surface of right kidney. This pouch is very important in surgery. On ultrasonography, sonographic appearance of the Morrison's pouch. This, this pouch lies between visceral surface of right lobe of the liver and anterior surface of right kidney. Both are enclosed in peritoneum. So, under normal circumstances, the interface between the two viscera gives a glistening appearance as shown in this figure. A represents the right lobe of the liver, B represents the anterior surface of the right kidney and this glistening area represents Morrison's pouch. Since this is a potential space, when fluid collects in the peritoneal cavity and patient is in supine position, this fluid enters into Morrison's pouch and is picked up by ultrasonography. As shown in this diagram, A represents right lobe of the liver, B represents right kidney, and C represents hepatorenal pouch of Morrison filled with fluid. Let us go for a ball session. Identify A. A is right lobe of the liver, B is right kidney, and C is fluid in the Morrison's pouch. What is right extraperitoneal space? This space coincides with the bare area of Liver. Superiorly, it is bounded by the anterior layer of the coronary ligament, inferiorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament, posteriorly by diaphragm in contact with bare area. On the left side, there is groove for inferior vena cava. On the right side, it is bounded by the triangular ligament. The clinical importance of bare area lies in the fact that an omebic liver abscess in this area may rupture directly into right pleural cavity. The bare area is also site of extraperitoneal portosystemic anastomosis between intraparenchymal branches of the right portal vein and retroperitoneal systemic veins that drain into azygous, semi-azygous and lumbar veins. Let us have a recap of this. In this slide, we can see the boundaries of the bare area. Liver is enclosed in coronary ligament. So, its visceral surface is lined by inferior layer of the coronary ligament and it is anterior superior surface is lined by layer of the coronary ligament. The bare area of the liver is not covered by peritoneum. It is in fact the largest bare area of the liver and is called the bare area. It lies directly in contact with under surface of the diaphragm. As shown in the simplified diagram, it is bounded superiorly by superior layer of coronary ligament which is also called the anterior layer of the coronary ligament inferiorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament which is also called a posterior layer of the coronary ligament. So between these two ligaments is the bare area of liver which lies directly in contact with the under surface of the diaphragm. If we see the boundaries of the bare area on the posterior superior surface of the liver, it is bounded anteriorly by superior layer of the coronary ligament, posteriorly by inferior layer of the coronary ligament. On the right side, is right triangular ligament and on the left side is groove for inferior vena cava. It is said that the bare area is a triangular area. Its base is formed by 
groove are inferior vena cava anteriorly it is bounded by superior layer of the coronary ligament posteriorly it is bounded by inferior layer of the coronary ligament and on the right side it is bounded by triangular ligament triangular ligament is formed by joining two layers of coronary ligament at an angle what are left subphrenic spaces left anterior intraperitoneal space is also called left subdiaphragmatic space left posterior intraperitoneal space is also called the lesser sac and there is third space which is called left extraperitoneal space left anterior intraperitoneal space left subdiaphragmatic space the boundaries of the left subdiaphragmatic space are superiorly anterior layer of the left triangular ligament anteriorly anterior abdominal wall posteriorly anterior superior surface of the liver on the right side there is falciform ligament which separates left from right anterior subdiaphragmatic space and inferiorly and to the left space is open as shown in this diagram falciform ligament separates the space from the right anterior space left anterior subphrenic space is bounded superiorly by left dome of diaphragm on the right side by falciform ligament and inferiorly by anterior superior surface of liver right anterior subphrenic space is a potential space between the under surface of the right dome and anterior superior surface of liver left posterior intraperitoneal space is also called lesser sac left posterior extraperitoneal space is located in relation to the bare area of stomach and in front of diaphragm left supra renal and upper part of the kidney so let us go to this diagram which will make understanding of these species easier as shown in this diagram right lobe of the liver and left lobe of liver are separated by falciparum ligament between the right dome of diaphragm and anterior superior surface of the liver lies right anterior subdiaphragmatic space between the left dome of diaphragm and anterior superior surface of the liver lies left anterior subphrenic space the right posterior subphrenic space is also called morrison's pouch which lies between the visceral surface of right lobe of the liver and anterior surface of the right kidney left posterior subphrenic space is also called lesser sac i want to summarize my lecture as under subphrenic spaces lie between transverse mesocolon and diaphragm liver divides supracolic compartment into suprahepatic and infrahepatic spaces which are further divided into right and left spaces morrison's pouch is right posterior intraperitoneal space which is most dependent part of peritoneal cavity in supine position it communicates with the lesser sac through epipolic foramen and with pelvic cavity through right lateral paracolic gutter do not forget to like subscribe and share this lecture thank you for watching do not forget to subscribe my channel press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads